Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you might be joining us from. My name is Tyler Troutman with Sure Market Development, and I'd like to be the first to welcome you to the Sure Virtual Launch Preview uh, for our audio ecosystem for conferencing. Uh, we have some exciting new products to show you, uh, and we want to jump right in. Uh, we have been doing more of a technical virtual roadshow uh, in the States, and we wanted to share that with you uh, because we, we have a lot of different presenters, and we have a lot of really great content. Um, we're trying to figure out how to get that all this great information out to you guys. And, you know, we've got four presenters, five different laptops, a couple live cameras mixed in there and a whole bunch of fantastic share products. Uh, so in order to minimize any sort of te technical difficulties or anything, uh, we recorded this presentation and we're just going to play it for you. Uh, we're all going to be here and just kind of hang out while this is going on. And at the very end, uh, we're going to answer any questions that you guys have either tapped in the uh, that you guys have uh, typed into the questions pane. Um, so with that, I wanted to remind everybody, if you're looking for the questions pane, um, if you're viewing the webinar in a browser, you're gonna look for the question mark icon. And if you're actually using the GoToWebinar app, uh, look for the dark gray toolbar with the orange box with the white arrow on it to access the uh, questions portal. Uh, we are recording this webinar and we will make it available uh, in the near future. And we'll probably send out an email or a notice or something when that is uh, available for you to be able to view again. Uh, so with that, I think we're going to get going and get this video going. Thank you everyone and enjoy. Good day, everyone. We're glad that you took some time to be with us today and we're excited to share with you some new products that are coming your way. We thought we'd start with just a quick walk down memory lane here. In recent history, we've had some great innovations, starting in 2016 with the MXA series Advanced Array Microphones. This really was a new class of conference microphones that were unequaled in design and performance and even support. These new array microphones really surpassed customer expectations. You can even say microphones grew up, so much so that they required a new class of signal processing. So in 2018, we released the Intellimix P300 conferencing microphone processor. This really changed the game for these advanced array microphones and kind of illustrated how archaic off-the-shelf DSP treatment of microphones was. The P300 readily handles the next generation microphones while providing ease of deployment and simple connectivity for conference spaces all over the world. The P300 also brought sure networked audio encryption between the microphone and the DSP for those users who were concerned about keeping conversations private. This was another industry first. So the MXA 910 ceiling array microphone and the MXA310 table array microphone, along with the P300, have completely changed the way front-end premium conferencing is accomplished. Uh, but you know, Shure's always driven to push the boundaries in everything we do. So in February, you may know or have heard that we released the world's first audio processing software. This is the Intellimix Room. Again, this completely turns industry expectations upside down. As you move from presenter to presenter today, which we'll discuss in just a moment, you'll experience some familiar hardware, but you'll also notice some things that are missing. In fact, you might notice several hardware components missing. This new era in conference room audio is born by, component, by using components already found in the conference space. Yeah, we're utilizing the computing power built in to the existing room PC running the soft codec. Shure's new Intellimix Room application handles all the conferencing audio processing that's needed. There's no more need for that bulky rack mount external DSP. The audio processing lives right on that soft codec PC. It's pretty simple, modest PC requirements, by the way. Windows 10 Pro operating system, a Core i5 processor with, uh, excuse me, a four Core i5 processor with eight gigs of RAM and a solid state drive. Uh, these are usually pretty typical requirements, even for the soft codecs like Zoom and Teams. But we want to continue to capitalize on the success that we've had with our array microphones by introducing a completely new form factor. Many times a table array or a square ceiling array just don't quite fit the architecture or design criteria. So today, as you work through all of our different presentations, you'll experience a new array microphone form factor. This is the MXA710. It's available in a two foot and a four foot version. 
have a quick look here. You can see it mounted below the camera and the display on the wall. And note that this is on the wall. It is so slim and sleek. Uh, that's the four foot version there. And here's a two foot version mounted right beside the display. But we know the conference room of the future actually really requires an end to end solution. So you'll learn more about our new MXN 5WC networked PoE ceiling loudspeaker. That old bulky amplifier for loudspeakers, that thing's gone out of the conference space too. With Shure's new MXN 5C network ceiling loudspeaker, imagine PoE endpoints. So we have microphone transducers, we have ceiling speaker transducers all over the network, PoE, and in the middle, it's only software. There's some great possibilities to think about there. So over the next 40 minutes, we're gonna have several different presentations of typical soft codec conference spaces. And in each of these presentations, you'll spend time with an Intellimix ambassador to see up close the benefits that all of these new technologies bring and how Intellimix Room makes all of that possible. So I'd like to quickly introduce to you your presenters for the day. Vanessa Jensen is going to work with us on designer software as well as Intellimix Room. Scott Ramsayer will talk to us about that new MXN, MXA 710 linear array microphone. Troy Jensen will work with us on the new MXN 5WC ceiling loudspeaker. And then Michael Moore is going to talk to us about a new accessory that really continues to complete that signal chain. It's a mute button, the MXA network mute button. And so with that, I'd love to kick it over to Vanessa Jensen, where she can get us running on Intellimix Room and Designer. Thank you so much, Chris. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for your time. My name is Vanessa Jensen and I will be your Intellimix ambassador for the conference space, which features Designer and Intellimix Room. In this conference space, we'll discuss how Intellimix Room can be used with existing room hardware to enhance the quality of communication in your meeting spaces. Then we'll dive into Designer. Designer is Sure system configuration software, which allows for a quick and easy deployment of your Sure networked audio solution. So in this conference space, we have a complete audio solution for a huddle room environment. In terms of our audio components, we have the MXA 310 table array microphone for our audio pickup and the new MXN 5WC network speaker for audio playback. We're also very excited to be using Intellimix Room audio processing DSP featuring best in class Intellimix DSP algorithms. Intellimix Room is available in eight or 16 channels and it is offered in a three or five year license. It runs on a Windows 10 Pro or Enterprise device. Basic requirements include an Intel 4-core i5 processor with a solid-state drive and 8 gigabytes of memory. In this conference space, Intellimix Room is running as a service on an Intel Nook in concert with a Zoom Room application. From the system overview on the screen, you'll see there's no rack necessary, right? We're using a standard gigabit network switch to power and to connect all of our audio components. And again, by using hardware that would already be found in the room, such as the Nook to run the Zoom application, we're able to bring a high quality audio experience to our huddle room environment. So now that we've discussed our audio solution, I'd like to discuss Designer. Again, Designer is that software tool that ties all of our audio components together, allowing us to quickly and easily deploy our Sure networked audio solution. So what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to configure the solution that we just discussed. So I'm gonna share Designer here. And so you should be seeing Designer 4.2 on your screen. And like I mentioned, we're just going to recreate the huddle room environment that we just talked about. And I'm just going to maximize my screen here. And so this is Designer 4.2. This is our Huddle Room project. On the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see a number of online devices. So those six devices are currently networked to my instance of Designer. In the center of the screen, we have our workspace. This is where we can begin adding those online devices so that we can configure, commission, and deploy this solution. So let's get started. On the online device tab, I'm going to bring in my MXA 310 table array microphone. 
One quick note, you'll see if I hover over an item, there is an ability to actually identify the microphone. So when I click this, the LED of the unit in front of me will flash so that I can be certain I found the right one and bring it into my project. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just simply picking the device, dropping it into the workspace. Next step is to bring in our Intellimix room, which is our audio processor. And last but not least, we'll bring in our MXN 5WC. Awesome. So we have our complete solution for our huddle room environment, right? We have our microphone, our processor, and our speaker. At this point, I'm gonna use the optimized feature, which is this sort of flashing play button found right above the MXN 5C in this darker menu bar. With optimized, Designer will do a number of things to the devices in my location. It will create all of those audio routes between my share devices for me. It will enable mute synchronization if applicable and it will make some EQ and gain adjustments to the devices in my location so that I am at my optimal starting point in terms of deploying this solution. Sounds pretty good, so let's optimize. Very quickly, you'll see that Designer establishes those audio routes between our devices, and again, it enabled the mute sync if applicable and made those EQ and gain adjustments. To highlight this, I would actually like to share my audio settings here in Zoom. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk a little bit about the audio settings that I'm using. So currently, I have an MXA310 on my desk that is being processed through Intellimix Room. It is connected to this nook via the Annie USB. So I have a simple USB cable coming in so that I can use that audio. Let's move to the system that we just configured and deployed with the designer optimized feature. So I'm going to actually select my Intellimix room echo canceling speakerphone, both for my speaker and for my microphone. If you pay attention, you may hear a slight change in terms of the audio quality when we move from the existing MXA310 to the optimized MXA310. So again, at this point, we have very quickly configured this solution. We have now deployed the solution and we are passing audio. If I'd like to at this point, if necessary, I can return to designer and make some changes to the devices to kind of optimize them further. So I can open up the user interface for my microphone here. I could add or remove channels, adjust my polar patterns, for example, and I would continue on with the other devices in my location Again, only if necessary. Before we move on, I'd like to actually talk a little bit further about Intellimix Room. So I'm currently using a 16 channel licensed version of Intellimix Room. When Designer opens this up, you'll see that I have audio metering on those first four channels. Here we go. So on the left-hand side, you're seeing those 16 microphone input channels with parametric EQ. AEC, noise reduction, and AGC. Again, those first four microphone input channels are occupied with the MXA310 audio that we just configured. In addition, we have eight Dante inputs with parametric EQ that can be used to bring auxiliary sources into your conference room. On the right-hand side, we have eight Dante outputs with parametric EQ, compression, and delay. These can support a number of MXN 5WC speakers in your conference room. Before we close, I'd like to talk about and highlight two really important features. The virtual audio driver is essentially your virtual interface or your interface to your soft codec. It's that virtual USB cable, if you will. So here on the virtual audio output side, on the lower right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see that metering audio. That is my near-end microphone audio coming from the auto mixer being routed to the soft codex mic input. So just to kind of boil that down, that's the MXA310 going to the Zoom microphone input. On the input side, you'll see I have a similar um, port here. So the virtual audio in, even though it's not metering because everyone is muted, is my far end audio. It's that far end return for my soft codec. It is my AEC reference by default, and it's also what I use to route to my reinforcement system. Again, reinforcement can be done with those eight Dante outputs in your MXN 5Cs. It can also be done with the PCIO, which we'll talk about in a minute, but there is a possibility to utilize the HDMI to the display speakers that's already in the room. And again, we'll talk about that in a minute. But just to kind of summarize, again, that virtual audio driver is sort of your on-ramp and off-ramp to your soft codec. 
Let's talk a little bit about PCIO. So here on the PC input side on the lower left hand corner of your screen, you'll see I have access to bring content in or take content out from my conference room based on the peripherals on the Windows device that is hosting my instance of Intellimix room. So I have some HDMI, I have USB connections here that can be used to bring again content into my conference room. On the PC output side, on the right hand side of your screen, I have a similar drop down box. You'll see I have a USB connection. However, the most compelling use of this, I believe, would be to use the HDMI out to the display speakers that's in the room already. So this is just a quick introduction and overview in terms of the features and capabilities of Intellimix Room. Now at this point, I'm not going to jump into the MXN 5C. We'll let Mr. Troy Jensen take care of that a little bit later. Um, I'd like to just simply wrap up our discussion for today. So with Designer 4.2 and the optimized feature, we're able to very quickly and easily deploy our Sure networked audio solution. Hopefully you were able to see how we were able to get started in the matter of minutes we were passing audio on this Zoom call. Designer 4.2 will support the new products we're talking about today and will be available later this year. Designer 4.1, however, is available as a free download today. It supports MXA 310, MXA 910, P300, and USB, and Intellimix Room. Speaking of Intellimix Room, it is available today. So just to kind of wrap it up, um, thank you so much for your time today. Um, in this conference space, we were able to discuss how you can unlock a professional audio upgrade by adding Intellimix Room to existing room hardware for conference spaces of all sizes, including the smaller huddle room environment. And additionally, with the demonstration of Designer, we're able to very quickly and easily deploy that Sure Networked audio solution with the use of the new Optimize feature. Thank you very much. At this point, I will now introduce Mr. Scott Ramsayer so he can discuss the MXA 710. Thanks, Vanessa. Hi, and welcome to my Intellimix room space. Uh, I have the honor of showing you the new MXA 710 linear array microphone. The conference space that I have is built around Intellimix room running on a Logitech tab configured as a Zoom room. I have a 710 mounted horizontally by the display, and along with a USB camera, our network speaker, and our network mute button, we have a whole conferencing solution. This is simple and elegant for the end user, and it's also architect friendly. With mics off the table and no need for racks, since we can tuck that PC and switch behind the display, AV doesn't need to get in the way. Even with different styles of ceilings and light fixtures, we can work around that with the 710 being able to be put almost anywhere in the room matching aesthetics and avoiding conflict. With conference spaces continuing to be more streamlined like this one, the expectations are still going up. So conferencing products need to be reimagined. Sure has done this. We've come up with a new way of leveraging that soft coated PC that's already in the room. And with new network mics and speakers, we have a solution that has less complexity, hardware and cabling. Here are the actual components I have here in my room right now that you're hearing me through and I'm hearing you through. A two foot 710 <clears throat> Intellimix room installed on a Logitech Tab Zoom room system with, that's what you see there, the touch screen and the nook there on the lower left. Uh, we've got the new MXN 5WC speaker behind it and the other side, the uh, network mute button. You're gonna, learn, you're gonna learn about those next. And I configured this all with designer software on my laptop. Since introducing the MXA 910 several years ago, we've been asked if we can make it in a smaller size and can we bring down the cost to meet budgets for smaller rooms? We've also been asked, well, can we just take a 310 and put that on the wall or the ceiling? Obviously customers wanted something between a 910 and a 310. So we put the same micro technology that's in our 910 into a new form factor that costs less, something that's gonna get better quality into more rooms. Designed for small to medium sized rooms, this new form factor allows placement almost anywhere in the meeting space. It comes in a two foot and four foot version and in three colors, black, white, and aluminum. Features include steerable coverage technology, which covers audio anywhere in the room, up to four lobes with the two foot array and eight lobes with the four foot array. Autofocus technology, which fine tunes each lobe position in real time so when the meeting participants lean back or stand up, you know, we still tuck that 
back into the middle of the load. There are default room coverage templates designed and tested for optimal performance for any installation, wall, ceiling, or table. So the MXA 710 works almost right out of the box. Like the 910, the 710 includes Intellimex DSP that provides all the processing needed for echo and noise-free audio. This onboard DSP includes automatic mixing, acoustic echo cancellation, noise reduction, and automatic gain control. Just like our other MXA products, the 710 uses a single category cable that handles PoE power, Dante and AS67 networked audio, and Sure Control. It has an LED status bar on each end that you can configure the color and brightness, or even turn off. Since the LEDs are below the grill, they become unnoticeable. It's compatible with Sure's audio encryption. It leverages designer software for easy setup and configuration and system on software for remote management and troubleshooting. End users want a consistent experience across rooms and across locations throughout the world. Sure makes this easy by providing a complete set of audio products that cover all room sizes. You just pick the mic form factor that works best for your space and then design commission your room with designer software. And the MXA 710 has the most versatile form factor yet. Included in the box is a wall mounting bracket and wall cover plate for surface mounting. And also eyelet screws for suspension mounting. Optional accessories include a desk stand that allows for the mic to be set on a surface. A tile bridge for installing the mic in a drop tile ceiling and to help with suspension mounting. A flush mount kit for walls, tables, or hard ceilings and even a mic stand adapter. The four screw holes are compatible with Visa mounting products made by third parties, so you can attach the 710 to a video display mount. Here's a 710 mounted below a display, above a display. We can mount it vertically on the side, and if you need symmetry, we're gonna offer a dummy unit that you could put on the other side. We can suspend it from a ceiling, flush mount into the wall or ceiling, or even a table. Again, architect friendly. With the flush mount kit, you can wrap the 710 in acoustic fabric to match decor, and that's what you're seeing here. I'm going to show you uh, a two foot version that I have here in the room. Give me a moment to switch cameras. Here we go. So here's a two foot version. Let me give you a close up there. The grill is steel and the body is die cast aluminum. There's the Visa mounting holes. Uh, you can see here where the <laughs> um, network cable comes out and there's a recessed area for the cable to either go the entire length of the microphone or exit anywhere along the way. And the mounting bracket also allows for that exit anywhere you want. Now, as far as coverage goes with the 710, it's different than the 910. Whereas the 910 gave you that flashlight beam coverage that you could steer in three dimensions, the 710 gives you steering that you can do on one dimension. It has a sliced Toretto pattern that goes around the microphone. You can control the width, so that could be small, medium, or wide and that's 30 degrees, 40 degrees, or 70 degrees. And then again, you can then steer that load. We'll take a look at that in Designer next. So here is uh, Designer live with the products that I have in my room right now. Uh, that two foot version that I have horizontally by my display. Uh, this is live. So if you see load two there moving around, that's autofocus at work, keeping me you know, as centered as it can. Uh, I'm using four out of the four lobes and uh, just wanted to show that in the steering, you can actually even steer all the way off the end of the microphone. Now, as I mentioned before, you might not even need to steer these lobes. We have default templates that meet most installations. But what's great about Sure products is that if you do need to customize, maybe you have a challenging room, it's as simple as opening up Designer, importing a floor plan, grabbing a lobe, clicking and dragging. 
So this is the horizontally mounted two foot version. If we were to take a look at what that would look like vertically, it would look a little different. Again, this is a top down view, but that sliced toroidal pattern that reaches around the microphone, um, this is what you would see. So designer even allows you to look at a side view when mounted uh, vertically. That way we can see both the width of the lobe, again, narrow, medium, and wide, um, as well as being able to steer it and take a look at it. And there's what both would look like. And then just to kind of wrap up here, uh, I'll show you how everything's uh, routed together. Uh, we have our 710 here coming into Intellimix room, going out to our speaker. I'm sending a reference signal back to the DSP uh, for echo canceling, and Troy's going to talk about that next. Uh, I'm also sending a signal back to the 710 for uh, helping with autofocus. And then I have the mute button hooked up. Now, as far as differences between the two foot and the four foot version, uh, besides the obvious length, you know, and form factor of the product and number of lobes, is really in the number of elements. The two foot has 50 elements and the four foot has 100. Now those additional elements in the forefoot, as well as their spacing, allows for more directionality, lower in frequencies. So that might be uh, helpful if you have a, a challenging room. And with that, uh, well actually let me cover uh, that, that also allows a little more pickup uh, distance with the forefoot version. We can pick up to 20 feet uh, with the forefoot version uh, and up to 16 feet with the two foot version. So I am now going to uh, hand over to Michael Moore, who is going to talk about the network mute button. Thank you, Scott, uh, for that review of the MXA 710. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Michael Moore. Uh, and today I would like to speak with you uh, briefly about Intellimix room application uh, and what that means to our integrators, as well as uh, introduce the new MXA network mute button. Now, as many of you are familiar, uh, over the past uh, few months, uh, many of the different codecing platforms uh, that have become household names as well, and whether you're uh, leveraging this soft codec technology from uh, a smartphone or a tablet uh, or a PC, uh, a consistent user interface uh, has been one of the, the pieces built into all of these platforms that have allowed not only folks from the AV industry, uh, but other folks as well to, to gain access and leverage these platforms as we work from home uh, and social distance. There is one big impediment to all of these soft codec platforms, uh, and that is limited audio inputs, uh, as well as limited adjustable audio DSP. Uh, and this is where Intellimix room application is truly seamless to the end user workflow while scaling the audio needs of each room. Now with these rooms uh, as well, at the, at the core of every system, uh, we still need to have a camera, a screen uh, or a display, a speaker uh, and a microphone uh, that's properly sized for the room, uh, as well as a central platform that's going to host that codec and control interface. And all of this needs to be professionally designed and integrated uh, by our SURE partners. Now, what is missing from this picture uh, is a black box DSP to handle the audio processing. At the center of all of these different systems you see here on your screen is a Microsoft operating system. Intellimix Room can be installed directly onto any one of these machines seen here. This allows our partners to scale the AEC needs based upon room participant as well as size. With products like Intellimix Room application, we're opening doors for cost-friendly software products, allowing end users a more streamlined approach to the AV IT deployment. Rooms that were once considered cost prohibitive are new opportunities for integrators using these right tools. And now to introduce the newest member of the MXA family, our network mute button. Coming from a very large request list from dealers uh, and end users that were asking for a very streamlined, simple way to mute and unmute MXA 910s in the ceiling, 
with maybe a P300 tucked behind a display, we have answered that request with the network mute button. We needed an easy, quick deployable button that can be configured with no official certification for, of programming necessary through our designer application. This is also another part of our system on audio asset management platform. This button can be remotely monitored and managed. It is a PoE device and it is also compatible with third-party control strings. If you're using this outside of the Sure ecosystem with TCP IP control strings, you can leverage this button as an added piece to a larger control system. As with all MXA product, the LED has configurable colors and brightness. It can also be used as a push to talk, push to mute or toggle. Now, what I have uh, in my system today is the MXA 710 two foot array. Uh, and my audio is being processed by the Zoom certified DSP processor. I have an MXA 310 that will demonstrate the interoperability between the mute sync of the mute button and our other MXA devices. So with that, let's take a quick look at our MXA network mute button. Now what you should see on your screen will be my 310 that should be familiar and our new network mute button. These two devices have already been connected through our designer software. We will show you in a minute how quickly and easily it is to add this button to the system. Our network mute button is a capacitive touch top with a one inch threaded tube that connects to the base. The threaded tube then connects into the base and the RJ45 on the other side connects your network mute button to your system. And with all Sure Network products, a reset button as well. So let's take a quick look in our designer software, how we can add this secondary button to our system. So by simply adding our network mute button to our switch and dropping it into our location, we then connect it to our P300 so that we are controlling the auto mixer inside of the P300, which is always best practice. Now, at this point, we'll show you two things. One, how quickly and easily it was to add that button. And then if you look at my head and shoulders shot in my viewing pane, underneath my name, you should see the mute function within the zoom window. We will now switch back and open up our P300 to show you that we are truly controlling at the auto mix position. And our last piece here will be the user interface for the mute button. Our brightness control, as well as many varying colors that can be used for other purposes than just a mute status. So if you do wish to use this in a larger control to maybe uh, visually demonstrate a room system status, you have several other colors to use. And under our logic control, mute control function, logic out or disabled, mute control mode, toggle, push to mute, push to talk, and default toggle state can be set to be unmuted or muted. And with that, I will now kick it over to Troy Jensen to talk about our next new member of the family, the Dante Conference Room speaker. Okay, thank you, Michael. I'm going to take a moment here to share my screen. And... Take a look at 
the PowerPoint. And in this room, we're going to cover the MXN 5WC. And in this particular application, it is an example of a larger conference space than what we've seen here today. And why do I say larger conference space? Because we have the MXA 910. The MXA 910 is the best in class ceiling array microphone, and it can cover up to a 12 meter by 12 meter room. In addition to the MXA 910, I have the two MXN 5WC power over ethernet loudspeakers. I have the MXA NMB mute button, which Michael just went over. And I also have a PC appliance on the table that is running both my Zoom Room software codec client and the Shure IMX Room DSP software. Those are all connected via category cable to the switch. And the only two devices that are not connected via category cable are the camera, which is connected via USB, and then an HDMI out from the PC appliance to the display. It's worth mentioning that you are actually hearing me on this exact system. I'm about uh, seven feet away from the MXA 910, uh, and then that is routed through IMX Room DSP software out through the software, the Zoom Room software uh, client. What makes this particular infrastructure very attractive is it makes it very easy for us to scale up. So if we had a larger room and we could add an additional MXA 910, another pair of the MXN 5WCs, we'd be covering a larger table in a larger conference room. And we can scale that up yet again. So again, a third MXA 910, another pair of the MXN 5WCs, a few more runs of category cable, a few more ports on the switch, and we're covering a larger space. Let's take a closer look at the MXN 5WC. As Vanessa showed you, we're gonna be using Sure Designer software to configure and commission the product, and that includes the microphone, the DSP, and the loudspeaker. Uh, it is system on compatible. So if you had an end user who was interested in monitoring their systems, you could look at the microphone, the DSP, and the loudspeaker. Sure audio encryption, from the microphone to the DSP to the loudspeaker, we have AES-256 encryption all the way through the audio signal path. Very few manufacturers can provide this level of security to end users who require this. It's aesthetically pleasing, fits into a variety of design environments. The grill is held in place magnetically, easily removable, and is paintable. And the logo is held in place magnetically and is easily removable. Gone are, the, gone are the days where you use the screwdriver to pop the little plastic emblem off, which usually left a little hole in the center of the grill. UL2043 plenum rated. We have a tile bridge accessory and uh, a pre-construction bracket available for this. And it's worth mentioning that it's PoE and PoE plus compatible meaning that if you have an existing switch that's PoE, it could draw as much as 12 watts from that port, providing up to about 92 dB SPL at one meter. If it's PoE plus, it can draw a maximum of 24 watts from that port, providing 98 dB SPL at one meter. Let's take a live look at the loudspeaker now itself. And here we have the logo as mentioned, is magnetic and held in place. The grill is magnetic and is easily removable. And here we have a five and a quarter inch coaxial driver mounted into the enclosure of the loudspeaker. We went with a five and a quarter inch loud, uh, coaxial driver because it best matched the volume of this particular back can. And in designing the back can, we went with a shallow mount. So the shallow mount back can allows you to install it into a variety of places because there's a lot of things that we're competing with up above the ceiling, conduit, sprinkler pipes, HVAC ductwork, cable trays, and we felt that it was best to just have a single skew with a shallow mount back cam. Here's where we connect. This is the PoE connection over here, and we have the ability to get a cover plate so that we can bring flex conduit directly to the device. And it is a typical blind mount installation back box, whereby a turn of the screw kicks out the dog legs on either side of the uh, enclosure, holding it tight to the tile bridge and or the pre-construction bracket. 
Let's take a quick look and see how this all looks in Designer. And this is the system that we showed you an illustration of. I have the first full eight outputs of MXA 910 routed directly to the first eight inputs of IMX Room. I have the mute button connected to IMX Room. And then I have the first Dante transmit channel out of IMX Room connected to the pair of MXN 5WCs that I have in this particular room. I also have the output of the loudspeaker routed back to the MXA 910 to assist with the auto controlling the audio auto focus in the MXA 910 so that the lobes of the 910 don't want to direct themselves to what's coming out of the loudspeakers in the room. This provides both a reference for autofocus and a potential reference for the AUC that's on board on the 910. We'll take a quick look at the coverage map and I'll turn off the coverage map for the MXA 910 so we can just look at the loudspeakers. And here we have a minus three, the minus six and the minus nine dB isobars for each of the loudspeakers. And if you take a look at this particular graphic, you'll see that all of the seats within this space fit within the minus six dB down isobar, providing for a plus or minus three dB coverage for the room. We can now take a look at the dynamic section or the DSP, and we have two Dante inputs on the loudspeaker. The first Dante input is obvious in a conference situation. We want the far end feed to come into the first input. The second input is optional, and it could be a feed from a building-wide paging system, or perhaps the room is dual purpose where it's used for conferencing sometimes and presentations another. That second input could be a feed from another Dante mixer to the loudspeaker with individual gain controls on each of the inputs so that you can level match. As mentioned, we have a Dante transmit channel, which we call speaker output. And that speaker output Dante transmit channel can be used for acoustic echo reference. 98, 99% of the time, people struggle with where do I grab my uh, AEC reference? And that wants to be the output of the, or whatever's coming through the loudspeaker in the room that you're in. I could very, this makes for a very easily pick point to route that Dante transmit channel around back to the input on an AEC reference. Um, and that could either be a P300, IMX room, uh, or uh, the 910 itself. That Dante output is selectable both either pre or post DSP. And the four dynamics that we have are a delay and that delay is adjustable from zero to a thousand milliseconds. We also have a signal generator, and there are four different signals that you can uh, create out of that generator. Pink noise, white noise, sine wave, and sweep. Sweep is particularly useful if you're trying to ring out buzzes or rattles in a T-bar ceiling installation. We have a four-band parametric EQ. Each filter gives you the ability to create either a low cut, low shelf, or parametric. And last but not least, we have a limiter, and that limiter can be either used to uh, protect the loudspeaker itself or create a not to exceed SPL level for that room. And that is the MXN 5WC. Thank you very much. And with that, I'd like to toss it back to Chris. Awesome. Thanks, Troy, so much. And thank you, frankly, to all of our presenters today. And, uh, there's a couple last items here that uh, I think are worth noting as we round the corner. Uh, first of all, you may be aware that we have been Zoom certified for some time now. Recently, we've also become Microsoft Teams certified by using the P300. So here's a couple examples of what that might look like. A small room, small space. This is much like what Vanessa was showing us earlier with a single MXA310, an MXN 5WC loudspeaker connected up to a PoE switch, with a P300 also connected to that switch, and then USB connection to that soft codec PC. Again, in this case, we're showing Microsoft Teams. And it scales. You've seen one thing co in common here as we've presented today, scalability. So a, a little bit larger room or even a larger space with a 910 and several speakers. Again, P300, all that connected uh, to the network, PoE switch, USB into the soft codec PC. So 
hopefully you've got the idea here that we really are and do have a vision for a holistic uh, end-to-end audio signal chain. And we think it's um, time. It's time the market wants this from a brand that they can trust. So here's a couple of reasons why we think Sure is the brand that you can trust. We have very unique market leading exper- uh, expertise in acoustics, wireless, DSP, and software. We've been doing all of these for quite some time, actually. And certainly when you consider networked uh, devices like Microflex networked endpoints that are the microphones, so whether it's the MXA910 ceiling array, the MXA710 linear array, or the table array, the MXA310, all the way to the other endpoint, the MXN5WC loudspeaker, We've got world-class leading performance and ease of use features. And then the stuff in the middle matters too. So Intellimix audio processing with a distributed architecture. This is interesting. We introduced that P300. That was our hardware DSP and we still have that. We'll have that for foreseeable future anyway. That DSP gets wrapped up and pushed out to the endpoints as well. So you may remember there were firmware updates that came to the MXA910, for instance, uh, the 710. All of these have Intellimix DSP on board. Even the 310 has uh, Intellimix DSP. The loudspeaker has Intellimix DSP. So we push it out to the endpoints, but then now it's also available as pure software that can be installed on that in-room soft codec PC. Our network system software is created for simple device and system administration, certainly for mass deployment and third-party interfaces. Uh, We're talking about designer here, which you've heard a lot about today, to whether you're creating designs offline or taking it to the field to actually uh, get a room up and running. And then certainly system on as well, uh, which is an enterprise-wide network monitoring solution. We've got that part covered. And the point here is that everything is designed to work together. And additionally, the benefits to consider when you do have a complete ecosystem, for instance, unmatched ease of deployment. You may remember that the 910 now comes out of the box, ready to go. You don't have to configure it any further if you don't wish. Uh, Same thing with the 310. The 710 is ready to go out of the box. Even the ceiling speaker is voiced specifically for conference room intelligibility. So again, while you can make it sound as pretty as you want with whatever music you want, you don't have to do any further EQing right off the bat. It is voiced for conference room speech. We like to play well with others with compatibility with companies like Cisco and um, uh, certifications certainly from Zoom and Microsoft. Uh, We're very easy to integrate. And from a product support and monitoring uh, you know, standpoint, really the point here is that there's one manufacturer to contact. All single point of uh, contact for technical support for the entire signal chain. This is important. And certainly confidence and communication is important. Um, with the addition of Sure Networked Audio Encryption, we are encrypting the signal from the microphone all the way through the network, through the DSP, all the way to the loudspeaker for those that are concerned with that. And then the icon that popped up there with DDM ready, the answer is yes. All of these products are DDM ready uh, for those that need that. And we do have prepackaged hardware and software bundles so that everything works together seamlessly and easily. Here's some examples of that. From the small room with a 310 maybe, uh, going to uh, Intellimix Room for processing, maybe one single loudspeaker, again, all designed and deployed with Intellimix Room. What about a medium-sized room with an MXA910 going to Intellimix Room? A uh, couple loudspeakers, no problem. We're, we've got that covered. What about uh, an MXA710 with a mute button? This time, let's use an any USB. We didn't talk about this product but this actually allows for the 710 to do the, ha- the heavy lifting, right? Uh, Intellimix DSP on the 710 will do AEC, noise reduction, all of the Intellimix DSPs done there. And the any USB is just our simple USB interface to whatever our soft codec PC is. Mute sync and everything works there, by the way. Uh, a couple loudspeakers and all set up with designer. Larger spaces, how about a 910 with a couple of mute buttons? This time we'll process though with a P300 because maybe this has the requirement to be a Zoom or a team certified space. So we've got that covered. Several loudspeakers, we're ready to go. Even larger multi-purpose spaces can easily be handled within our ecosystem. 
and we're super excited to discuss that with you. You may be asking and wondering, there might even be questions already in the chat feature, uh, when is this stuff ready? Well, later this year is the answer, certainly on the MXA 710, MXN 5WC, the MXA network mute button, all of that will be ready uh, sometime this year. And then uh, for reference here, all of the Intellimix room product is already ready to go. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, contact us for a demo and trial licenses. Uh, uh, and, and the whole point here also was system on, we mentioned that earlier, gave a quick nod to that. System on is our audio manage, asset management software that's really meant for enterprise type deployment. It's available now as well. Check in with your uh, regional sales manager on pricing information or if you have any other questions about availability. And kind of to wrap things up here before we get to any questions, you can find us at Infocom. We're part of uh, Infocom Connected. Uh, you can take a quick screen grab there. Uh, you'll find our landing page with more information about these products that we've talked about today. And uh, also our Sure Audio Institute is probably of interest if you want to learn more about these products. And uh, we've got two different paths there. The Sure Audio Institute offers a sales enablement path, which is kind of a higher uh, level type of course that kind of gets you what you need to know to maybe specify a product, uh, understand it a little bit better. But then we also have a technical enablement path that allows uh, for folks that like to get their hands on, you know, the, the, the guys that'll be in the field deploying these devices uh, and whatnot. So check us out there if you want even more information. And at this point, again, I wanna thank everybody for attending our webinar and we are going to address any questions that have come up in the chat room. Thank you. Awesome, outstanding. So we do have some really good questions kind of rolling into the chat. Um, I'll kind of hop in and handle the ones on the certification. So. Uh, some questions came in on, you know, uh, IMX Roomby Zoom or Microsoft Teams certified. So, uh, you know, our Zoom certifications are P300, any USB, MXA 910, and MXA 310. Uh, the Microsoft certifications uh, for Teams are MXA 310, 910, and uh, P300. Uh, so we are working on certifications uh, for IMX Room with both Zoom and uh, Microsoft. This stuff just kind of takes time and we're working through that process right now. Uh, we've also are working through the entire certification process for all of our products uh, with Google. And once again, this just kind of all uh, takes time. So uh, we're hoping to get there soon. Like I said, probably maybe end of the year is what we're kind of aiming for. Uh, but like I said, depending on what's happening with their platforms is kind of how they prioritize it. So. Uh, it looks like we have a question for Scott Ramsayer for the MXA 710. Uh, and I think what that might be is, uh, can you describe, I guess two things, and maybe this will cover the question, is how many microphone elements uh, per array, and then also maybe how many lobes per array? Sure, all right. I got a two foot here, so I'm gonna hold that up. The two foot has 50 uh, mic elements, and you have four lobes. The four footer has a hundred mic elements and has eight lobes. Awesome, perfect. Can you also uh, quickly describe um, maybe how the array picks up uh, in both a horizontal and vertical kind of axis? Sure. Yeah, so we can maybe just try to visualize. Um, if we were just to have one lobe out of this two foot here and we're mounting horizontally, that lobe is going to go around the microphone and the width of that lobe is at you like this. So you can have narrow, medium or wide, um, 30 degrees, 40 degrees or 70 degrees. Then that lobe can steer, let's do it like this, can steer like this, even all the way off the micro, end of the microphone. And by default, we've got four lobes that kind of splits up the room this way, but that's from floor to ceiling, okay? When you mount vertically, now we're going from wall to wall but we have a narrow lobe, well, if you choose narrow, narrow, medium, or wide lobe aimed, let's say, at talker height. So for a vertically mounted mic, it's very well possible you might just use one lobe aimed just across the room right at where at people's mouths. I hope that helps. Yeah, that's great. And uh, just to be clear, saw a couple questions coming in. Uh, the linear array is just a microphone uh, at this time. Uh, all the feedback on, you know, obviously adding the speaker and stuff is all great information that we will pass along to our team. But at this time, when the MXA 710 launches, uh, it is just a microphone array. 
Uh, so thanks, Scott. We got a couple questions for uh, Troy about the uh, MXN 5WC. Uh, the first one being, uh, is there any seismic restraint points on the MXN 5WC? There are, in fact, points where you can attach a safety cable. So the answer to that is yes. Okay, perfect. And look, we had one on the inputs. Uh, basically, is there a priority for any of the Dante inputs, or maybe a ducker? No, no, there's no ducking function in the in the DSP currently. They are just, we have the uh, two Dante receive channels, input one, input two, and then the one Dante transmit channel. All right, awesome. A um, couple other questions. Looks like we, uh, for the MXA 710, I can ask this one back to Scott. Um, does, the, does both the two foot and four foot include Intellimix built in? Yep, absolutely. So this is going to make a really good, you know, economical choice. If you pair this with an anti USB, that might be all you need um, for a product. As long as we're sending an echo reference back to the 710 for that built in processing, then you will get noise free and echo free uh, one single output from the 710. Okay, awesome. Uh, we had a question about system on, and I can answer that one. It looks like uh, kind of what's the process. And so system on is an on-prem solution, so it will need to be installed uh, on the site where you want all the uh, all the where all the gear is actually installed. Um, it's a network-based so uh, software, so you'll add all your devices by IP, uh, and once they're added by the IP address, you can monitor them, you can control them, you can set up alerts, all that type of stuff. Uh, System on is now a uh, free application. So if you'd like a trial version or you just want to try out the software, please reach out to your sure rep um, for that. Uh, let's see here. Let me see one just came in. Um, not sure if you know this one, Troy. Um, how is the EWIS emergency announcement system integrated with the Sure ecosystem? This might be one we have to uh, grab an answer on and get back to somebody. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what the requirements are on that. Uh, I mean, we have the UL certification uh, is all that I can point to at this point. Uh, for mass notification, there are, it's not intended as a mass notification device. It's really intended more as a loudspeaker for uh, just conference spaces. Got it. Perfect. And what are the recommended switches, uh, PoE switches, uh, for the Sure ecosystem? Uh, and that one is, you know, we don't have any specific switches that we like. We typically tell people to kind of stick with the uh, the switches that are recommended uh, for Dante. So if you think, you know, gigabit ports, uh, if you're doing PoE, obviously PoE. If you're, you know, going to use a speaker at at full, you know, range, you're going to want PoE plus. Uh, you might want some quality of service, maybe diff serve, anything like that. Um, and then also, you know, a managed switch uh, is is recommended. Um, one of the hard things, a couple of hard things to look at is switch. Uh, you don't want any sort of energy efficient Ethernet, any sort of green switch. Um, and you want to be aware of the store and forward switches. If you see those words, uh, store and forward, you're going to want to kind of pass on that switch as well. So looks like we have a question here for Scott Ramsayer for the MXA 710. Uh, let me look at this. Can you explain, Scott, can you explain how the MXA 710 works in a vertical position um, over a horizontal position? Sure. Um, well, I've got a two-foot version right here. And so let's, let's start with horizontal. Again, the pickup pattern is around the microphone. This is different than the 910. And what you can steer is along the axis of that microphone. And you can also control the width. So um, for the two-foot version, if we've got four lobes, we might split up a room four different ways. Okay, so with these four, uh, let's do the medium-sized lobes, you know, so 40 degrees, 40 degrees, 40 degrees with some overlap. Um, so that's how we do that. If we mount vertically and we use that, let's say we use that same template, it would be the same thing. We'd be dividing up the room <laughs> four different ways. Now, do you really want to be picking up the floor? Maybe not. But as far as around the room, we are going to be picking up from wall to wall with a width of 30, 40, or 70 degrees. And so maybe for a vertically mounted, you might only have two um, or even one low-made. 
then again, if you mount this guy higher up against the wall, maybe you can kind of start partitioning off a table, one reaching to the far end of the table, one midway, one closer, depending, you know, probably on a larger table. Um, but don't shy away from just using one load that's just right at talker height. That can be really effective in a room. That's all we want to pick up is that area, not, not the ceiling, not the floor. So I'm excited to see how this plays out. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. Great answer. Um, one question for Mr. Michael Moore. Um, is there a limit on how many uh, mute buttons can be associated with one system? Um, Michael, might have to unmute yourself. Sorry. I had my mute button unmuted, but not my WebEx unmuted. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, currently, they have tested up to 30 network mute buttons connected to a single location in Designer simultaneously. Um, that's not saying the limit is 30, but that is what we have tested uh, in a single location at this time uh, to prove functioning. Okay, awesome, perfect. Um, for Mr. Troy Jensen, a question about the MXN5 WC. Um, is, is the speaker paintable or just the grill? Do you need to, I guess, do you need to paint the, the actual speaker? Yeah, you don't really need to uh, paint the actual speaker because the grill covers uh, the entire enclosure. So if you're looking to match an interior finish, just painting the grill. Uh, would be enough to uh, to blend it into the decor. Okay, awesome. Uh, looks like we have an Intellimix room question. Uh, and I think the question was, is that is Intellimix room uh, going to be available for Mac um, or just pin, uh, Windows 10 PCs right now? Yeah, good day, everyone. Um, that's a great question. Right now, it is only available for Windows. Um, so of course we will look um, to maybe add that in the future. It's it's not been decided, but at this at this point again, only Windows 10 Pro or enterprise devices. Okay, thank you, Vanessa. Uh, we just had another one roll in. How how would we deal with three MXA 910s with Intellimix room in a large conference room? Uh, assume we would prefer to have individual mic channels from the MXA 910. Uh, thanks. Uh, great question. Uh, I can kind of run with this one. So if your room has really, really, really difficult acoustics, if it's a poor acoustic room, we would obviously definitely, any situation where you can do direct feeds from the lobes into your DSP, uh, that would be fine. You know, you could use Intellimix room with those 16 channels if you had two MXA 910s. If you get up to the three MXA 910s, um, you know, you could use that auto mix port uh, out of the MXA 910. You could send a reference back to the 910 to help with the autofocus feature, but also uh, to be the acoustic echo cancellation within the MXA 910. So all the processing is happening up there. And then we're just bringing them into Intellimix room. So uh, I've got a question for Troy Jensen. Uh, how many speakers can be connected to the one PoE port on the MXN 5WC? It's one for one. Uh, you need to connect you know, one port per loudspeaker uh, okay. for power over Ethernet purposes. Okay, awesome. Scott, we have a great question for you for the MXA 710, uh, and that is, what is the maximum capture distance with the two arrays, the two foot and the four foot? Um, well, it's audio, so it depends. We are saying the sweet spot for these microphones for the two foot version is two feet to 16 feet uh, in a typical room. Uh, and for the four foot, uh, four feet to 20 feet. Um, better sounding room, you should be able to get, pick up further. More problematic room, maybe not so far. Awesome, perfect, thank you, Scott. So with that, uh, we are kind of right at time. Uh, we really hope you guys enjoyed this webinar. Um, you know, in from a market development standpoint, we really appreciate uh, you taking the time to uh, join us today and learn about these new products. Uh, we're really excited to get them out in the market. We hope you are all as equally as excited as us. Uh, and with that, I wanted to say thank you once again. And uh, if you have any questions, feel please feel, please feel free to reach out to your local uh, share market development or rep or sales representative, anybody like that. Uh, we're always here to help. So thank you.